We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
word meal or flour and one little bit of oil there was nothing that our God could not do amen amen and so even before I read the scripture this morning I want you to look at your neighbor and say wait okay you weren't ready you ready now look at your neighbor and say wait on the Lord Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord. On the Lord. Turn with me this morning to Isaiah chapter 40. And we're going to look at verse 28 to verse 31. Acknowledging again our Reverend Felton, our Pastor Nurse, and all of you lovely saints in the house this morning. Because there is nothing that he cannot do, we can trust and wait upon our great God who is able to do exceedingly, who is able to do what seems impossible to man. There is nothing impossible with him. Verse 28 of Isaiah chapter 40, it says, Has thou not known... Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall but but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint Heavenly Father we give you thanks this morning for yet another opportunity that we can come together as the church. Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. For we've come to do nothing but to lift you up. For God, you are worthy, you are able. We sang the songs this morning, there is nothing impossible. The scripture continues to confirm that have we not known, have we not heard that you are the everlasting God, that you are the creator, you do not faint, you are not weary, there is nothing too hard for you, there is nothing impossible with you. And Father, as we will sit at your table right now, oh God, and hear your words to us, may we wait, God, may we learn to wait, may we trust you and wait, God, may we arise and wait. God, may we wait upon you, knowing, God, that when we wait and trust in you, oh, God, that your timing, oh, God, is accurate. May, even though it may seem a little delay to us, you are always on time. Hallelujah. You are always on time. And we give you praise, God. We give you thanks. Hallelujah for your word. God, that reminds us one more time. God, that we can put our confidence in you. Because, God, in you is victory. Sure victory. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, wait. wait. On, the Lord. On the Lord. You may take your seat. Hallelujah. To wait. Is to hope and to anticipate 
and to trust in God. This is where we're waiting on the Lord. And this requires faith, patience, humility, and endurance. Waiting is a spiritual discipline. It can be a very difficult thing to do for some people or for most people. But this morning, amidst whatever may be occurring in your life, all that is going through and causing your senses to feel that you are this area. I want you to know that you can wait and trust in the Lord because he is able to bring you to sure victory. The word in the Hebrew, wait means to kavah. To wait actively with anticipation, hopefully watching for God to act. Like Habakkuk. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower and watch to see what it is that the Lord will say to me. And God did speak to him and say, write the vision down. May we wait upon the Lord this morning because he will surely answer. This passage of scripture at verse 28 tells us, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, you see, we serve a magnificent and powerful God. He is everlasting. Our scripture this morning tells us that he knows our down sitting, our rising. We cannot hide from him. Wherever we go, he is there. That's the God that we serve. He knows our thoughts before we even think them. He knows what we require before we even open our mouth to act. That's the God that we serve. And he is encouraging us or reminding us this morning that we can wait upon him. That we can trust his timing. That he is accurate. That he knows better for us than we know for ourselves. And so that we can wait on him. Because when we wait on him, verse 31 tells us, but we're not, we haven't gotten there yet. 31 tells us what happens when we wait upon the Lord. Because there is no searching of his understanding. We can't really comprehend his understanding. When he puts it together and he asks many things of us, we can't really pick it to pieces and say, well, hmm, we can do it this way. If God says it, that's the way that he wants it to be done. We cannot search his understanding. It's too vast for us. He is wisdom. He is power. He is understanding. He's all those things. He's counsel. He is might. He is knowledge. He is all powerful. He is the greatest supplier of everything that we need. And so we can wait, truly wait on him. Waiting reminds us that we are at the mercy of God's timing and we have no power to change it no matter how we try. When he says wait, we have to wait because there is nothing that we can do to change his hand, his timing is accurate. And when we understand the characteristics of the God that we serve, we can truly trust him. Because everything that we need, he has the capacity to fulfill. However, we must wait. However, we must love him. However, we must be obedient. No matter what. All throughout the Bible, we see many testimonies of those persons who waited on the Lord. And believe that he was able to grant them the deliverance that they needed. The breakthrough that they needed. The victory that they needed. 
Verse 29 says, he giveth strength to those who are weary and fainting. He increases power to the weak. So if you feel weak, if you feel faint, if you feel weary this morning, and even the, so don't feel ashamed. Because even the strongest of the strongest at times get weary, feel faint, feel tired, feel can't make it. But this morning, we are reminded that our God, he is all powerful. He has all the strength that we need. His strength never diminishes. And we can trust in him confidently. He gives us strength to the weary. He increases power to the weak. He giveth power and strength that never diminishes. He never, we, we can run and not be weary because our God, he never runs dry. He never gets weary. He never faints. He never gets tired. He is never too busy to help or to listen. We see in the word of God this morning that even the widow woman, when she trusted in the judge, she was persistent. She went, she said, avenge me. And the unjust judge, the word of God puts it, didn't pay her any mind for a while. But he said, this woman keep coming and keep coming and she will wear me out. So even though I don't trust God, and even though I really don't have no regard for man, I will avenge this woman because she would wear me out. And God is saying to us, act. It may, you may have to wait, but act. And it shall be given to you. He, his ears are always open. And so he hears. You might have to wait like Habakkuk. But Habakkuk said, I will, I will stand here. I will stand upon my watch. And I will wait until God answer. How many of us are willing to wait until God answer? I say waiting is not easy. We know in the natural, sometimes when you're waiting on somebody, and when you see five minutes gone or ten minutes gone, you're getting a little agitated. You're getting a little impatient. You're getting a little frustrated. But God is saying, don't get impatient this morning. Don't get frustrated. Don't get irritated. Wait on me. Because what I am able to give you will surpass anything that you can imagine. You may be thinking small, but I am thinking big. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. I know waiting is not easy because I cannot think about one thing in my life that I have gotten easy. It seems like everything in my life I have had to wait on the Lord for and trust him as the old people will tell you where I can't trace him. But I thank God this morning that I waited on the Lord and he surpassed anything that I can imagine because he is able to do it abundantly. He is able to do it for me and he is able to do it for you. So I understand that it is hard to wait. I understand that sometimes it looks discouraging when you're waiting. I understand that you would sometimes want to make a step and go ahead. But I also understand that it is wise to wait on the Lord. Because when you run ahead, you mess things up. I understand that when we run ahead and we want to do it our own way, we cause 
nations to rise up. Nations that the Lord didn't even originally put in the plan. Like Abraham and Hagar. Hmm? Because when it is that God gives us a promise, even though it might take a while, God ain't forget, you know. God's timing is sure, you know. But when it is that we want to say, you know what? All right, man, Lord taking a little long here. So let me concoct a thing. So going to my, 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 my maid, Hagar. And what you do? You set up a whole nation causing confusion all up to today. That's what we do. But God is encouraging us this morning to wait on him. Be of good courage. He will strengthen our heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Never compare or limit God because of the difficulties that you are experiencing. Don't underestimate God because of what you are feeling. Never compare God to your difficulties. Because our God, he is everlasting. Our God, as to put it in verse 18, verse 18 says, to whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? We can't compare him because he can't be compared to anybody. He surpasses everybody. So never compare him even to our difficulties. So when it seems that all of life's issues is crushing you and you cannot go another step, remember that you can call upon God and he is able to renew your strength because he is strength. He is the supplier of strength. He is the source of strength. Verse 30 says, even the youths, even those who are supposed to be strong and vibrant and full of energy gets tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. It says, but. There is a but there. But they that wait but we're not just waiting. We're waiting on the Lord. Yes. But when they that wait upon the Lord, whether you're young, whether you're middle age, or whether you're old, you can wait on the Lord. And he shall renew your strength. Second Corinthians 4 and verse 16 says, Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So he is able to help us that we be renewed. He is able to renew our strength. Not only will their strength be renewed, but they will soar. We will soar. We will mount up with wings as eagles. And we know that eagles are a renowned, they are renowned for their powerful soaring flight. And Isaiah said that when we wait on the Lord, we will soar, not like birds, we will not fly like birds, but we will soar like eagles. Amen. So our God, who is all powerful, there is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing that he cannot turn around. He will allow us to be renewed. He will allow us to run and not be weary. He will allow us 
to walk and to not faint. When we see in Hebrews 12 and verse 3, when we consider all that Jesus endured the cross, it's shame. The opposition from sinners, the opposition from religious leaders. But he was diligent and he was obedient to what God had called him to do on this earth, to fulfill God's plan. And because he was so diligent and obedient, we should not grow weary or faint or lose heart. This morning, let us truly examine ourselves and see if we are waiting on the Lord. Because the benefits of waiting, we see outlined. When we wait, we are renewed. We soar. We run and we are not weary. We walk and we do not faint. So let us be mindful of the times, even as we look around, that we are in. The word of God talks about the children of Issachar, how they were able to discern the times. May we understand the times that we are in and what it is that we ought to do. We ought to be getting ourselves ready. We ought to be preparing like the five wise virgins who ensured that they had oil in their vessels and they also had extra oil. And so we must ensure that we are prepared and ready. That when the bridegroom cometh, we have oil. We're not sleeping. But even though they slept at one point, when they got up, they had oil. They didn't have to go and buy oil or beg for oil. Because my oil may not be enough for me and you. You might got to go and buy your own. So let us be like the five wise virgins, ever increasing our oil, ever preparing, because these are the times that we need to look up. These are the times we need to make ready. Because when the bridegroom cometh, that's not the time to be making ready. That's the time to be ready. That's the time to be trimming the lamp and going in. And so, may we increase our oil levels. That we have an adequate supply to keep us burning. The word of God says that the oil, the, the fire, sorry, on the altar shall not go out. So let us do all that's in our power to ensure that it does not. And so as we wait, may we avail ourselves like Isaiah, who we're in today, to be used of the Lord. As we wait, let us stir up the gifts that is within us. Like how Paul admonished young Timothy. Let us purpose in our hearts that our house, we and our house will serve the Lord like Joshua as we wait on the Lord. Let's get rid of the baggage. You know, the word of God says, lay aside the weight. So let's lay aside the baggage that we have carried. If you've carried it for 10 years, remember the story of the pilgrim's progress? All it does is weigh us down. All it does is keep us from progressing. All it does is stop us from developing and growing. So we need to cut it loose. Amen. That we'll be free to worship our God. We'll be free to give him what he deserves through 
worship. That we will not be bound, but we will let go of the past. Forget the things that are behind so that we can press towards the mark of our high calling in God. Let us choose the good part like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus and take a hold of his words. Let us forget about being so busy with everything else like Martha. Jesus said, Mary have chosen that good part that will not be taken away from her. May we choose that good part and wait and increase our all and endeavor to work out our relationship with God. We can also get very busy working for the Lord. Because Martha was preparing for Jesus, you know. She was preparing. She was doing a good thing. She was preparing for Jesus. But Mary had chosen the good part. So we want amidst all that we do to make sure that we work on our relationship with our Lord. Because we want to hear at all. This life is over. After all our coming, after all our laboring, we want to hear, well done. We don't want to hear, I don't know you. We want to hear, well done. So arise and shine in the name of the Lord this morning. Make a conscious decision now, today. Because we only know about now. So let us make a conscious decision to serve the Lord and to trust his timing, to trust his ways, to trust his paths, to trust his truths. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Don't wait on nobody else to encourage you. Encourage yourself in the Lord like David. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Lift your eyes to the hills from whence cometh your help. Look unto him who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Because he is your refuge. And he is your strength. Stay connected to the greatest power source, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. And let us not only stay connected, but let us stay connected daily. Because we know if we have our cell phone and we plug it in today, and even at 100% charge, it will not last us for an entire week. The battery will go down. It will turn off. You will not have use of it. How it is with us, the believer, that we think we must plug in one time and no more. We have to plug in daily. We have to connect daily. The same way, I just used a little illustration with the telephone or anything else that you need that has to be charged. We too need to be charged. Amen. So that we can operate. But our connection is to God. Our connection is to Jesus. Our connection is with the Holy Spirit. So that we too can function. So we need to connect while we wait. Amen. We need to connect. While we wait. Amen. So I know the young people know about charging phones. Amen. And so because we don't want to shut down. Because we don't have no power. We will connect to the power source. Who is able to bring us to 100% capacity. 
he will renew us that we will not be weary and that we will not faint. Now we are living in a very fast-paced, advanced, busy time and period. And waiting can be a bit challenging. But when It can be easy to get frustrated and impatient when we are waiting on the Lord. But I want to encourage us this morning that while we are waiting on the Lord, not to get impatient and not to get irritated and not to get frustrated. Because we cannot hurry God, and we have to wait and trust him. And I'm going to give you one scenario with someone, again, who did not wait on God or trust him. And because of that, that was his downfall. May we wait on the Lord this morning so that. We receive all that he has for us. And it does not be our downfall because we did not wait. We see Saul refusing to wait on Samuel to offer the burnt offering. And because Samuel had told him, wait for me seven days. He thought that Samuel was taking a little too long. Because Samuel didn't come on the seven days that he tell him to wait. And so, Saul, with his presumptuous self, because he knows very well, God has structure, God has principles, God has a flow of the way things are supposed to be done, even though sometimes we don't think so. He, with his presumptuous self, said, why are you waiting anymore? Because Samuel, like, he's not coming. So I am going to offer the sacrifice himself. He is not a priest. He was the king, but he is not the priest. You see, sometimes we like to step out of our authority because we think we can't wait. He was not a priest. He was not of the Levites. He was not the one to offer sacrifices to God. He lucky that God didn't strike him down right there and then because that was the times that he was living in. I mean, we might not get straight down today because of a little grace. But he's surprised that God didn't strike him down when he tried to offer that sacrifice. But this is what happened. Because he drew impatient and offered the sacrifice. The thing is, as soon as he finished offering the sacrifice, Samuel turned up. But don't we understand that it was just a little test to see what Saul would have done if he had delayed a little bit. And don't you understand that sometimes when God wants us to wait, it's only a little test to see if they really want me or they want the thing. And most of the time, we are straight in God's face that it is only the thing that we want. Because sometimes we get it and then we tell God, well, hey, I'm done with you because you know what? I got what I want. Don't we understand that everything that we have comes from God? And sometimes He only wants us to wait a little bit more. Just to see, you know what? Uh, will they trust me if I hold out? Even though I say I am going to come on the 10th day. Will they hold out if I come on the 11th day? Will they still trust me if I say 14 days and I come on the 15th? May the Lord help us. This is so serious. May the Lord help us. 
I know that we hear, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen our heart. I know we hear a lot, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But may we really be mindful that waiting on God is so important. And when we don't, we mess up big time just because we can't wait. So as soon as he was finished, Samuel showed up. And Samuel told him, you have done a foolish thing. You have done a foolish thing. His sacrifice was sinful. But even though it is a good thing to offer sacrifice, his sacrifice, because he's the body that offered, it was sinful. And he lost his kingdom because of it. His kingdom will not continue anymore because of his impatience. Because he can wait no more. May we not allow impatience to make us disobey God. May we not allow impatience to disqualify us from what God has for us. So though your faith may be struggling or weak, hold on tightly to God. And you will begin to experience the strength that we spoke about this morning. The strength that you need. Because your God, my God, he is our refuge and strength. Much patience is needed in following God's word. Much patience, I'm going to say it again, is needed in following God's word and obeying God's word. This is nothing that we can rush. The word of God talks about running this race with patience. So there is much patience needed to follow God's word and obeying God's word. But obeying God's word is the best choice that we can make. Obeying God's word and waiting on the Lord is the best choice that we can make. And so I encourage us this morning one more time to wait on the Lord. Look to your neighbor one more time and say, wait. Oh, no, you're not convincing enough. Wait on the Lord. One more time. Wait. On the Lord. The song says, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. Anyone wanting to come this morning? Because we're waiting on the Lord. Ah, uh, you can trust in his timing. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. May it not just be a song. Mind waiting on the Lord. Anyone? I don't mind waiting. I don't mind, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting on the Lord, on the Lord. I don't mind waiting, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. 
Amen, amen. I'm going to, I'm going to ask it a different way. If you are a person that gets a little impatient sometimes, or a little irritated sometimes, or a little frustrated sometimes in waiting, come. Waiting is not easy. Waiting is never easy. Mm -hmm. I don't mind waiting. No, I don't mind waiting on you. On the Lord. On the Lord. I don't mind. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting, don't mind waiting on the Lord, on the Lord. One more time, I'm going to sing it. I don't mind waiting. The strongest of the strongest. Oh, I don't mind waiting on the Lord, on the Lord. I don't mind, I don't mind. Don't mind waiting. Don't mind waiting on the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'm going to pray. Even me. Lord, even me, I stand, God, waiting upon you and trusting you, oh God, as I bow before you, oh God. I am not at the altar, but God, physically, I stand at the altar. With my sisters and brother. And Father, as we come before you, we acknowledge, O oh God, that we need your strength. We need your help. We don't want to be disqualifying ourselves. We don't want to be disobedient, O oh God, to you because we're impatient. We're irritated. God, we are frustrated and we could not wait. We understand, God, that at times it may seem long, O oh God, waiting Oh God, it may seem, oh God, that our prayers are not answered. But even as you, you answered Daniel, even, oh God, as you have answered, oh God, many in the Bible, oh God, that we, we see and that we read about, we are trusting you, oh God, to turn our situation around. Even now, oh God, as we wait upon you, oh God, that your, our strength will be renewed. Even as we wait upon you, oh God, that we will run and we will not be weary. We will walk and we are, will not faint. So, Father, as we are on the altar, oh God, today, Father, renew our minds, renew our hearts, renew our spirit, God. Renew our soul. May we not faint, oh God. May we not be weary. But Father, oh God, may our eyes be fixed upon you. That we are able, oh God, to fulfill all that you have called us to do. I pray, oh God, that you will reach forth your hand even now and touch us individually. Touch us collectively, oh God. Strengthen, oh God, our feet, our hands. Teach us, oh God, to war. Teach our hands, God, to war. Teach us, oh God, 
that we will stand firm and confident in you and trust you and wait upon you because you are able to bring us to sure victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch us today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you.